Okay, this is the uh, using the File Geodatabase API. So we're going to talk about the File Geodatabase API. I'm Lance Shipman, the product engineer for the File Geodatabase, SQLite, various other and sundry things. And my <laughs> dev on this project, Dave Souza. Hello. Can, so you, can you all hear us okay us out there? Okay. Volume level good? Yeah? Okay, good. Thank you. So we're going to give a brief introduction to the product, talk about what tasks are supported, <laughs> Uh, do an overview of the API, talk about what isn't supported, and uh, talk about some latest updates, and then do a demo. Now, seeing that my screen's messed up, we may not, the demo may be kind of interesting, but uh, what I get. The point of the, the file G database API is to provide a non arc objects uh, means to access file G database data. It's, it's a C++ API and C Sharp uh, wrapper uh, to, with high, coarse grained access to the, the file geodatabase. It's not designed to replace ARC objects, so we're not trying to do everything ARC objects does, but provide a certain framework of, of uh, functionality. And I went the wrong direction. It leverages the work done at ARC, ARC uh, or at the geodata, at the geo, on the geodatabase at 10.0. And uh, so we don't, we don't use, we don't, what we're using means that we really can't use uh, or support uh, pre-10.0 file geodatabases. And the audience is uh, advanced developers who want to write uh, uh, or require access to the file geodatabase without using ARC objects and without needing a license. What we allow you to do is to create, open, and delete file geodatabases. We can read the schema of just about anything in the, in the file geodatabase uh, and then create schema for objects within the, within the simple data or simple feature model. So we can, you can create tables, you can create point feature classes, uh, polygon feature classes, line feature classes, multi point, fe point feature classes, and uh, uh, multi patch. You can create feature data sets, domains, and subtypes. So again, you can read the contents of a geodatabase. Uh, just about anything can be read, with the few exceptions like network indexes. We don't have a supply a way to do that. Uh, we allow you to insert and delete the contents of, of tables, of points, lines, polygons, multi-patch again. We allow our queries on attributes and on some sp very limited amount of spatial queries in the sense that we allow a envelope intersects spatial query. We don't allow anything else as far as spatial selection. Uh, we also support spatial references. And uh, as of 1.4, uh, we started supporting custom coordinate systems. And uh, we support a set of the SQL 92 standard select statements ordered by no, rel no, uh, no joins at this time. It's a, the, the API is available as a single download zip file containing the C library. Uh, it's, built, we have, we have, it's available built on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, including API documentation written with Oxygen. Uh, Oxygen. Uh, it's a freely available on GitHub. Uh, this morning, or last yesterday evening, I uh, pushed out the latest version to GitHub. So the 1.5 version is now available. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about it in a moment. Platforms, we support Windows 2008, 2012, Windows 7, 8.1, uh, Windows 10 with, on Visual Studio uh, 2012, 2013, and 2015. Uh, 2015 is new with uh, the uh, 1.5 version of the software. On Unix, again, at, at 1.5, we've added a few things. We, uh, we support Red Hat. Uh, sushi, I may pronounce this, pronounce it, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, Ubuntu, and then uh, we uh, support GCC and, Ga and, uh, and Clang. Oh, uh, on Mac, Yosemite, El Capitan, and Sierra, and uh, the min we have a minimum uh, version of GCC and of Clang. What well, don't we support? Well, we kind of talked about what we do, virtually everything else. Uh, so we don't support annotation or dimension features. We don't support networks. 
topologies, terrains, representations, parcel fabrics. You don't support any form of raster. Again, as I said earlier, spatial queries are limited to envelope intersects. Attachments are not supported. And joins are not supported. Well, since we put out 1.0, we've put out uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and then now recently 1.5. 1, 1.5, 1, again, we had, the biggest thing in it was we added the support for uh, Visual Studio 2015. Uh, we have uh, now support uh, GCC 5.x on Linux. Uh, we added some, some flavors of, of uh, Linux that we didn't previously have. Fixed a few bugs. We now can use the spatial reference ID to create a spatial reference uh, before you had to spell it out. Uh, uh, a couple minor things that we fixed that, that were just well, mostly irritating. Again, it's available for download. Uh, off of GitHub, and uh, it's again just been there for the last about 12 hours. The next thing we'll take a quick look at, maybe real quick, depending upon my screen, how it operates. Uh, we'll take a look at the API, what it looks like on disk, and then a couple uh, demo applications. Yeah, Lance, could you go back to the one that uh, showed the, uh, the URL? I think some people are trying oh. to note that down. You're trying to get that, leave it up there a bit. <coughs> like speed by. <laughs> Don't really get it. And if you have any, go ahead. When you're done, let me know and we'll move on. Okay. I think they got it. Want to get it? When we're done here, please take the survey on the on the uh, app. app. Yeah. Now, let's see what the fun is. Yeah. So while Lance is uh, getting set up for the demo, I just kind of want to just summarize what we said. You know, so the file GDB API. It's a very small API. There's uh, but it exposes all the essential operations that you need to do to work with the file geodatabase. You know, um, I think it's very simple to use and understand. We've got uh, a lot of good samples that show, you know, little sample applications that were written to show how to use the API. Um, you know, the, the, it's, it's, a, it's a small API, but it, it's got all the power to do pretty much anything you need to do. And it's available on all sorts of platforms and compilers and you know it's it's somewhat unique for ESRI products, for example, in that it's uh has a strong presence and usage on both Linux and Mac OS. And you know, usually ESRI stuff is only on Windows for the most part. Question? Oh, a feature service, like a map service? Yeah. Sure. No, if you're lucky. <laughs> that, that's, well, that one of the problems with uh, using a file geo database in a map service is that it's, it's intended for reading primarily. So if you happen to be the database administrator, you have to do jump through some hoops to be able to do some updates on there. Uh, I, I, yeah, so you 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 might be able to. It it just depends on whether anybody else is connected at that time or not using it as a service, right? Because it's file geo database supports multiple readers but only one writer. So so what happens is. If you've got some readers there and you want to be the writer, you have to kind of wait until they all go away, right? So, uh, so it's, a, it's a timing thing that has to do with who's using it at that moment. So it's only locked temporarily during your request, not Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So the question was, 
if you are using a file geodatabase uh, behind a map service, uh, you know, that's mostly everybody is just simply reading that data through the map service. There's no editing there. But what if you happen to be the database administrator and you need to update that data on that service, can you do it live while the service is running? And the answer is sort of maybe if you're lucky. There, there's actually some tricks that people do involve um, basically having two different copies of the file geodatabase. And so here's the one that's live. And then if you have edits, stage it all into another folder and get all your edits done there and then nobody's hitting it and then you will be able to do anything you want because you'll be the only one that knows it's there. And then there's a way in Windows to switch a folder share instantaneously so that um, it'll, so the locking situation goes away. But well, I want to take that offline afterwards if, yeah. if you want. We're finally ready we'll let, to go. We're ready for Lance to go, so. Okay, <coughs> we're going to look at this example first here. Well, before we go to the example, let me bring up something else. This is what you get in each one of the zip files. You'll, you'll, you'll find a bin directory, a bin64 directory, a, do, a documentation directory, uh, the include files, uh, two lib directories, a file with some licenses. It had more to do with just how we put the software together. It's not a license that you're required to pay for or do anything with. It's just some licensing files that we're required to put there. Uh, the samples in uh, C++, uh, we see samples in the C Sharp wrapper, uh, and then some XML files that, at, starting with 1.4, uh, aren't nearly as important. They used to be required really to do anything, but now we've, we've provided uh, tools to allow you to to uh, create tables and feature classes without using any XML in the README file. If I locked it up, oh, that's fine. Okay, this, this is our first example. Uh, we have, this one creates a, spa a table with a, with a spatial column and inserts a row. So the first thing it's, going, it's doing is it's, create, it's going to uh, open a, uh, a geodatabase. And then it's going to create the uh, spatial reference and uh, using a, a, a text string uh, at uh, ten at one five, you can you can do this just by calling, making this call. You don't need the text call. Uh, uh, if you have it said set the fault x x y origin, the resolution, the tolerance. Then uh, create the geometry definition. Oh, uh, we want to. We need to add uh, our fields for the feature class we're creating. So we create a field depth. And uh, the first, in the first uh, case here, we create the object ID. We set its type, whether it's nullable or not. Then uh, on the next one here, we set the oh shape, set the field type to geometry, uh, set its length, oh, and uh, oh, the length's not important here. And we just walk through setting each of the fields that we've, we've chosen to add. And once we've got finished setting our fields, then uh, we create the table here where we, uh, we're creating a feature class called US Cities, past our field depths we just created. Uh, and uh, create the feature class. Before, now we're going to load data. So the first thing, if you're loading large amounts of data, you want to set a write lock and uh, set load only mode. So it's not trying to generate, uh, regenerate the index as it's loading, and it's not trying to grab, keep opening and closing the locks. It just keeps the lock open when you use set write lock. So then we're going to create our new row, create our geometry, and, 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 and uh, set it up. Oh, we'll set the geometry to the point geometry we just set right here. 
set some set our attributes. So we're setting city name to say Cabazon. Set the population, set some, you know, elevation, and then uh, then we'll do an insert. And then this this walks through and does it for several more rows. Let me move it down a little bit. <laughs> and what it's done, we, we, we make it, we're going to do a table search. So we're searching on, going to return city name, population, elevation, and capital, where city name is equal to San Francisco. So we apply that, we, 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 we will apply that query and then read back uh, the rows returned. And then once we finish reading back the, the, the rows, we'll turn load, mode, load only mode off and free the lock. And close the table, close the geodatabase. Bring up the next one. Okay, this one is just opening, first it opens, it's gonna do a search a spatial query in combination with an attribute query. So we open up the, the uh, geodatabase right here. And then uh, open the table, which in this case is the city's table. Set up an envelope right here, which is our search envelope. And then we'll perform our search, which in this case we, we're, looking, we're going to return name. We're searching for the, where, where the term equals city, and we passed in the envelope. So we're doing an attribute and a, a, a spatial query. And so we're just going to walk through these. I need to F10. I'm going to clear this breakpoint so we don't sit here forever. Oh, so we can, in this case, as we walk through, we count how many rows. Again, we close the tables, close the city, close the database, and then the next one. Now this one does a bit more. This is actually using a, a shareware shapefile library that, that reads a shapefile and reads a dbase file. So it opens up a shapefile. It's going to create a feature class. It's going to load that shapefile into that feature class. So the first thing this does is get rid of the database if it already exists. So it doesn't delete your database. Okay, and then we create the new DO database right here. Uh, we, in this case, we are using XML to do the creation, so we load this XML, an XML definition for the, for the table. Uh, we do the create, so it creates the table that we're going to load into. Sets our locks like we did previously. Uses the shape library that we uh, to uh, open up the shape file, open up the dbase file, get some information about the shape file, so what fields it has in it, etc. So we know how to map it. And then we're going to walk through row by row, reading the rows out of the shape file and then write them into the feature class. We read a shape. 
set the geometry, walk through all the attributes from the shape file, setting them to our feature class. This actually is looking to see what types they are, so we set them properly. As for each type, we have a setter. So like in this case, cities.row set string. We're setting the value for that for that for, for, the, for this field. You walk through doing that, making sure we get the right one each time. Do the insert. Read the shape. You keep doing that until we run out of shapes. It should be done at that point. Got it. Then after we're done, we uh, close the shape file. Hit the wrong button again. Go away. Go, get rid of load only mode. And close the table, close the database, and we're done. So it's a fairly simple API to use. Questions? Yes, question? Sorry, could you I couldn't hear what you started with. Okay. Well, let me answer that in a two-part fashion. So the, okay. the question was, can you write to more than one feature class at the same time? Um, without regards to threading, the answer is yes. Okay. So, yeah, you can you can open up as many feature classes as you want and be inserting into them simultaneously. There's no problem with that. As far as threading is concerned, um, the file GDB API is not thread safe. And the reason why it's not thread safe is because of uh, the use of, uh, we have to use an XML library and those XML libraries are not thread safe. So that basically kills the whole thing, unfortunately. Uh, other, other than that XML library, I don't think there's any fundamental reason why we couldn't be thread safe, but because of that library, it, they have, they have uh, those, we use uh, libxml and it has global state, and it basically, that, that just wrecks the whole deal, unfortunately. Um, yes, if you do your own thread handling yourself, you're probably okay, um, but just, be on the lookout just to be sure. Yeah, yeah, thread, threading's lots of fun. <laughs> Question? Road ahead? Okay, well, so yeah, so the file GDB, you know, we had a, uh, we had a, we had design goals for it to be a, a very simple, very straightforward API that does only the essential things. Now, as time has gone on, we, we have added a couple things here and there. But for the most part, it does what it needs to do. Um, the, the, the ma mostly since the initial release, we have made a few little enhancements here and there. Um, we are definitely adding new compilers all the time. Every release, we usually get rid of one and add a, get rid of an old one and add a new one. Um, other than that, it, it pretty much does what it needs to do. So if you, if you think there's something missing, let us know and we could think about it. You know, one thing actually that if I had had time, which I didn't, we were going to add support, at least in a limited way, for relationship classes. Um, but we, we basically haven't really had the luxury of the time necessary to do that. But that is something that is on the wish list for some, some time. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was missing. Uh, well, one thing we don't do is we don't do rasters. Originally, we hoped that we might do it. I don't think that will ever happen. Um, 
Another thing is, oh, attachments. Uh, attachments is something, yeah, so attach, when the file GDB API was created, attachments didn't exist yet. And so, um, but we haven't gone back and added support for that, but we could do it and uh, it wouldn't be that difficult, but we, you know, we have competing um, priorities for our time. So we don't always get to spend the time on the file GDB API that we might like to. But those are a couple of things that have been on the wish list. It is, do you have other things in mind? Many? Many? Oh, a replica. Um, no, I'm not sure about that. Why don't we take that offline afterwards if you want to? That's an interesting idea though. So, uh, but just in general, if, peop if you do find there's some thing that you think is essential that we don't support, let us know because we definitely listen to everybody's feedback and try to uh, address it as we have the chance to do so. Yeah, you know, so it's not, it's, not, it's not over, it's not done. You know, it's going to have an ongoing life. And part of the reason for that is it's, there's some very important clients that rely on the file GDB API uh, for their products. So it, it's not like this was one off and now we've forgotten about it by a long shot. Yeah. So, um, so one, one example, just to do a little quick name dropping, is a lot of people have probably heard of City Engine. City Engine, you know, that they make all those movies like Inception and... Super, one of the Superman movies recently, and uh, I don't know, some other one I've forgotten now. Cars 2. They, so that, the, of course, they're doing all that fabulous 3D rendering. We don't have anything to do with that part, but they use the file GDB API to store their data, to store all their buildings and so forth. And so that's critically important to that product. So, so that means it's gonna be around for a while. So don't worry about that. It's, it's, it's here to stay. And we definitely are interested in feedback, ideas, suggestions, and we try to do them as best we can. So if, um, if you want, we can take that offline at the end of the session, which actually we're probably almost there. You can also um, leave comments on the, at the GitHub site. Oh yes, which is a new thing for us now. So we only kind of just got on GitHub recently and um, I haven't taken a look at it yet, but I think that's a really good way to leave us comments, suggestions, feedback, that type of thing, because it's more centralized for us. We used to use the old user forum that they used to have, but then that, that thing just went weird. I, I don't even look at it anymore. It's like, I, don't, <laughs> I can't ever find anything in there. We used to have our nice little old file GDB API folder, and now, we, now there, there is no such thing and I just don't know how to find anything anybody wants to talk about, so. I, re I read it. <laughs> Excuse me? It's not ignored. No. Uh, oh, on GitHub? GitHub, yes. So GitHub, GitHub is now how we uh, basically publish the file Geo geodatabase API. You know, it's not open source. Well, there is source there for the samples, but you know, that's where the binaries are. So you can go there and you can download, um, the DLLs and all that stuff. But GitHub also has a mechanism by which you can make comments, questions, suggestions, that type of thing. And we will monitor that. Um, so that, I think that's a good, I, I think that's a, that's a good resource that we should all try to take a look at and that'll, and we definitely take, uh, we'll pay attention to that and uh, try to do things as best we can. I also really, really encourage you, if you've not used the API yet, just spend a minute and look at those samples because, you know, it's not hard to figure out, but it's a lot better if you, you know, I, how many people pretty much rely on copy paste from existing code all the time? I know I do. Yeah, so this, this will serve as a really good starting point. It's a lot easier to take some existing thing and modify it slightly to your purpose than it is to start from scratch. Um, and uh, and the, the great thing is, you know, if you want to, you can step through it just like Lance just did and just see exactly what happens. So I definitely encourage you to take a, take a good look at those samples. I think, I think they've done a good job of illustrating 
all the important things, how they work. Other questions? Part, as far as what? Like throughput time, like its ability throughput. to read and update databases. How does it compare to the um, Okay. So the question was if you're using the file GDB API to do what? Like insert a very large number of features or yeah, something? Or, or to read a large number of features? And how does it compare to if you had written it the same thing using Arc Objects? Um, I think it will probably be very, very close if anything, slightly faster. It may be slightly faster. Um, and when yeah. compared to, I've done some testing in the past, and when compared to, to Arc Objects using C++, not C Sharp, it's mm. slightly faster. Slightly fast. So I would expect slightly faster. It's a huge, massive, unbelievable difference, but it is slightly faster. Yeah. Because, because the fact of the matter is, all the important code that, that runs file GDB inside of Arc Objects, it's the exact same code in the file GDB API. We didn't rewrite anything. We just kind of repackaged it and, and, um, and, and made it. So it's really running the exact same code for the most part. Yeah. No, it's not. No, because that, no. We would have never had, it would take way too long. <laughs> yeah. There's it's not the same. Well, actually, no, it is a different code base. We just updated. Well, we made a, co we made a copy of it. So, but but virtually, if you put them both side by side, if you put them both side by side and looked at it, you'd find that it's 99.9% .9 exactly the same. Um, yeah. So the other thing is that that means that's important because of bug fixing. So a lot of times what we do is you know uh, they have an independent separate existence which is makes it hard to manage these things right but since they're so much the same let's say we find some big bug or a performance improvement that we do on the arc object side then we simply port that same fix over into the api eventually right so and the fact that the code bases are nearly identical makes that very easy to do Hub, GitHub. Yeah, did you see the URL that was up there? Yeah. Git, that's Git, GitHub. Yeah, so GitHub is a, is a big clearinghouse for open source and other types of uh, projects. So, uh, so we, have, we have a little spot on, on GitHub, and that's where we, we essentially publish the API and put it, put it there in GitHub, and then you, can, you just go there in your web browser, and then you can download it. Uh, and also, um, like like we said, post comments, questions, suggestions, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because because on GitHub, they all they have different repositories. They're called. So we have our own repository, and any comments you would make would be specific to that repository. So there there will be other ESRI has other repositories on GitHub as well. But that's completely separate from our repository. So yeah. So yeah, I would encourage you to, um, if you have things to say or questions to ask, please use that. You know, you can use that, whatever, what is that new thing called, GeoNet? I don't like it, but you can use that too. It's like, I just can't ever find anything in there. It irritates me, but. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. OK. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe I'm just. I don't know, slow to change or something, but anyway, yeah. Oh, okay. The GeoNet thing. You know, did you ever use the old user forum? Yeah, me too. It's it's terrible. It's like it, nothing's categorized at all. So like if you, you you know you can't just like drill down and uh, you know there's no nice hierarchy of topics to be able to guide you to the specific thing that might be relevant right. it's just this huge entire mass of like open text search or something like that. yeah pretty much so their answer 
when we complained, when I complained about that, I'm like, oh, we'll just do a search. And I was like, eh. Well, what if somebody spelled it wrong or something, right? Or, well, yeah. you know, then, then you'll never find it.